let's do it. Okay, this use this tone of voice. It's the Uncultured Saints. I'm Pastor Goodman. Da, 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 da. You have to say your own name now. Oh, sorry. I'm Pastor Goodman. No, you're, this is going to go worse than <laughs> I had even planned for it to do. We're the Uncultured Saints, and if you are still listening to us, that is regrettable for you. Uh, but we've been... <laughs> We've been working our way through the, the, the small called articles, through uh, Angry Luther's last angry letter, uh, because why wouldn't we spend our time with this? But it was it is, right? No, he, he sure. still had many more angry letters to write, uh, right. but he thought it was, which, though. Which, yeah. So, uh, folks, uh, uh, this is probably a, a key thing for you to do. Um, don't burn bridge. Well, it worked out well for Luther, but don't burn bridges. Uh, thinking that you're never going to see people again. <laughs> when, when you quit your first job uh, down at McDonald's, uh, don't set the kitchen on fire. Speaking from good. experience there, buddy? <laughs> no, but it's just not going to go well for you at the end. Okay, I that's think. fair. Right. Hey, uh, keep talking. Uh, I got to turn off this uh, this this heater so we don't have background. Noise. Oh, we're recording right now, but I know. Set, it'll good. be right no, there. Okay, just set fine. it right up. Sure. It's just across the room. Set yeah. it up. Go, so, go, so set it up. I'm trying to set it up. This is the only time I get a voice in is when you actually leave the microphone. So we're, we're actually working our way through the small cult articles. And today we're actually going to start to talk about what it is uh, when people work in the church. We're going to talk about pastors or, or at least in this case, priests. And so we're going to look at, at how you get to be made a, a, a pastor or a priest, what you ought to be doing and, and, and sort of how your life ought to, to look. Um, at the time when they were recording this, uh, recording this at the time when they were writing this yeah they probably didn't have podcasts back then every bit of society was better off um <laughs> but if you wanted to become a pastor a a bishop has to ordain you and a bishop that is sort of in the line of the roman catholic church and we're like well if you're not going to ordain us we're just going to do it ourselves a and that's probably not super um relevant today but there's still some stuff to take away from it right there yeah, I, the thing is, we, we could talk about a lot of things. And, and for the kids out there, uh, like you said, uh, maybe it doesn't seem as if much of it matters, but maybe it does. Um, <clears throat> maybe we should talk about uh, how one within the Lutheran Church um, uh, it, it becomes a pastor, right? Um, and, and how we uh, can be confident, how you can be confident that, that, that the guy uh, standing up in, in the pulpit um, is supposed to be there. Um, as opposed to somebody who just says he's supposed to be there. Because <clears throat> there are a lot of um, denominations out there that, that can have uh, men who will just uh, say, hey, I, I had a word from God uh, come to me and, and said uh, that I need to be a pastor. And so I'm, I'm starting my ministry, right? And they, uh, they have no theological education. Uh, they, they don't have a church body who stands behind them saying, yes, without a doubt, this man uh, kind of fits into the realm of what Paul set out in, in Timothy and Titus, those pastoral letters. <clears throat> Instead, he's just his uh, self-proclaimed man saying that, that God spoke to him. Uh, Pastor Goodman, would, would, we be, would we be okay with that guy uh, standing up in the pulpit uh, declaring the, the authority of uh, uh, to proclaim the forgiveness of sins and stand in the stead of Christ. I mean, you don't even have to go to church stuff before you get uncomfortable with this. Like, what if you just sort of, you had a word from somebody nobody else could hear, and now you're going to be a brain surgeon? N no formal training, no no real practice, but just, I'm going to do brain surgery on you. You cool? Okay, let's go. Uh, money, please. Uh, if that's not going to work, then you actually have to go into, is what you're saying on behalf of this voice valid are, are you talking about something that is in line with the apostolic teachings with the bible with with the way the church uh, confesses throughout time and space or are you just sort of going on the fly um so we actually want not only training but we want certainty that what you're saying is is true is, is dependable just just real quick and i don't want to run down a rabbit hole but to push back against that somebody could say well isn't that what happened with with paul so, or isn't yeah, that what happened with the prophets, Jeremiah, right? The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah and said. Right. Um, so go and talk. Yeah, so um, our, our theology books, if you go into sort of the deep end of the pool, there are two kinds of calls. There are the immediate call and the immediate call. The call according to means, so um, like through a 
uh, an office of the church and the call apart from me. So the Lord spoke to Abraham and said, the first thing you're going to do is circumcise yourself. And this is time to sort of give pause and reflect on whether or not the voice that you are hearing is valid and from God. Uh, so, so here's the thing that comes whenever God speaks uh, apart from um, the, the normal means of the church, it's always accompanied by signs. First, the, the, the word agrees with everything given thus far. And second, uh, there are miracles. There are signs that accompany it. So Paul then, who, who was just sort of grabbed hold of by the Lord, starts right off the bat with miracles, Moses, miracles, prophets, miracles. It, it, it happens then. And so um, the, the simplest test then, if the word of the Lord comes to you and says, well, you're the pastor now, you say, all right, cool. Is what you're teaching in line with the rest of the scriptures or not? And, and if not, you, you know, and then cool, do me a miracle. Then, then, then we'll listen. Then we're good. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. That miracle business is going to be tough. I mean, so this is why then we, we fall on ordination, um, that, that the right. idea that the, the church would say you are, are trained and this is where the Holy Spirit works. When you're speaking, it's actually on behalf of God. The problem that was actually happening here, though, is that the bishops of the Roman Catholic Church, they were busy doing other stuff. Like they weren't doing church stuff. They weren't preaching. They weren't baptizing. They weren't teaching. They were really sort of invested in politics and money. Right. <clears throat> All of the... the uh... Yeah, all the other stuff, the political stuff that comes with uh, a big organization. And, and to be fair, and for lack of a better term, I, I, I hate to use the, the term organization with, when we're speaking about the uh, ecclesiastical churchly things, but to a certain extent, right? Uh, she kind of fits. Back uh, then it came with a lot of respect. Right. It, it, but not only that, I mean, there, there is even today a role for that. I mean, just look at your own home congregation, right? Uh, if, if it's a, a, an average to, to, to bigger size or even a smaller size congregation, let's just say it's a it's 100 people uh, averaged on a Sunday, right? You've got a political structure there. You've got a president of the congregation. You've got elders. You've got people who are writing the checks and people who are paying the bills and people who are counting the money. You've got all of these things that uh, are, are temporally needed. Uh, and yet those are not on the same plane or uh, as important, at least at least spiritually important, as uh, the proper pro proclamation of the word and the proper administration of the sacraments. Right? Those are the most important things uh, laid out here. So even though all those other things are needed <clears throat> and are important, they're temporal things. And so that's fine. Uh, let's let's speak about them as temporal things. Let's talk about them as important as temporal things, <clears throat> but let's keep them in this temporal realm over here. And then let's not say uh, that these temporal things um, that God Himself has ordained people. You, I, I think you would be very hard pressed to find uh, within uh, uh, your average Lutheran Church Missouri Synod uh, congregation uh, a president of the congregation who said. God has chosen me to be the president of your congregation. I would, I would kind of hope not. It's probably not there, right? Right. Uh, which is a good thing. So then if you extrapolate that out, um, does will that hold to other offices, temporal offices, important temporal offices, but things like circuit visitors, things like district presidents, synodical presidents, or talking how Luther was talking about, bishops, popes, that sort of stuff. Right. I think the sorry. Go ahead. No, go. go ahead. No, I was saying where where the Lutherans, the reformers, where Luther in the small called articles ends up is saying, "Hey, um, listen. One of the one of the things that we have uh, uh, is ordination, and we have bishops ordaining people, placing them into the office, and that's for the sake of good order. But it's not the bishop himself. He doesn't have this special power. It's." It's uh, the church who has this authority to actually uh, place uh, pastors into this pastoral office to stand in the stead uh, and by the command of Christ. It's just that the church has said, hey, for the sake of good order, we're going to have these, these bishops do it. Well, at the time of Luther, uh, now we're, the bishops are thinking, no, they've got this special power that's been given to them through this rite or sacrament of ordination that's been given to them from the Pope. And so the only way in which you could become a pastor uh, ordained is if uh, this magical uh, uh, transference of power came down from the Pope through the bishop and landed upon you. And if that happened, then you could be a pastor. But if that didn't happen, 
then they would all see you. The, the church in Rome would see you as Ill- illegitimate. Right. And it's because they're looking at different things. And so uh, the thing that Luther's real upset about is that, look, if you want to be a, a pastor, that's great. There, there's plenty to do, though. Teaching, preaching, baptizing, administering the supper. This is going to keep you busy to the point of burnout all the time. Um, if you're spending all of your time doing the other stuff, how are you paying attention to the things that are yours? Which is actually, ironically enough, the very argument that the Roman Catholic Church makes as to why their priests can't get married. If, if we let you guys have families, you're not going to have time to do the things of the church, like, you know, run for political office and right. make lots of money. Right. And it's really interesting. The three things that we're going to be talking about, it kind of all run together. And, and it's it's weird how uh, it, it would appear, and I think we would say correctly so, that, that Rome has things backwards here and, and are talking out of both sides of their mouths. Um, because, like you said, in regards to we can't let the, the pastors uh, 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 get married because of what St. Paul said in regard to him, and I'm paraphrasing, but I, 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 it would be better if you were all like me, not married, so that you could devote 100% of your time, effort, and energy to the church. Yeah, except right? Paul used to be married uh, as, as a Pharisee because you didn't get to be a Pharisee in good standing unless you were married. Well, I don't know how he stopped being married. I don't, I don't know if he, he lost his wife or if she left him or, or what happened. But Right. Um, I, I do know yeah. that, that that same Paul writes to Timothy a, a, and um, says that it's the teaching of demons to forbid marriage. Right. Yeah, it, it's, it's tough to get there. Uh, it's the teaching of demons to forbid marriage, except within the church. Like, that, it's really tough to, to, to make that connection. But it's, again, it just, just to wrap up uh, the ordination and call stuff and, and what uh, uh, Luther was, uh, was talking about most, most there is again back then they were fine they were fine of saying hey uh pope uh bishops listen you can ordain us for for uh for the sake of good order and so that there isn't any um division within the church you can ordain us uh the only thing that we insist upon is uh saying uh, that that you guys cannot say cannot insist uh that your political office of bishop is given to you by God. Mm-hmm. If you're if you're cool with saying, "Hey, uh, uh, the whatever order man created, whether it was uh, uh, five guys in, in in a room deciding, or whether it was at a, dis- hamburgers. a district convention, uh, 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 voting for a district president, whatever you guys decide, uh, that's fine. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, let's go ahead and just say." It's it's by it's by man, and that's fine for the sake of good order. Which uh, I think I've said this before in some of our previous uh, seasons, which means nobody's heard it before. Um, <laughs> I'll get I on a quick hear this either. Right, I'll get on a, which is why I'm not scared of saying it. I'll get on a quick little soapbox and say uh, our synodical president, our district presidents, our circuit visitors, none of them are in the place where they are because God ordained them to be there. I think our confessions confessions speak against that. I think if we're if we're good with our confessions in regards to ordination and call here, if you read the uh, uh, primacy on the Pope, um, I think it's pretty clear that that that's the case. Did I get myself in hot water? Um, only to our imaginary listener. So, uh, Mr. District <laughs> Secretary, uh, let's move on. If it'd be all right with you. Yep, let's do it. Okay, so the marriage of priests then. Uh, there's a problem with this, and um, it's it's a very present problem with it. We're not talking about theology or, or politics or angry dying men that existed uh, 500 years ago, but rather uh, there's been some pretty major scandal amongst the Roman Catholic priests. Uh, there's been a lot of just gross stuff that's happened. Uh, that's not new. Um, Luther is, is writing this, and he writes, they have acted like anti-Christian, tyrannical, desperate scoundrels, and by this have caused all kinds of horrible, outrageous, innumerable sins of unchastity, of depraved lusts, in which they themselves still wallow. There's this thing that happens with sin. Uh, you can put it uh, over there and say, just ignore it, but it just festers. It just festers, and sooner or later, it boils over. And so one of the things that God has given for us uh, in the gift of marriage is a place to put our lust in a good and godly and productive manner. That that we're creatures that, that aren't meant to, to run from sex, that it's not a, a, an evil thing. It's actually a good gift of God. But if it's used for evil, because it's so powerful, awful, awful things can come from it. 
And right. the priests who are told, whatever you do, don't get married because that would make you a, a bad pastor, a bad priest, incapable of caring for people. Well, if you weren't a sinner, we could have this talk. Like, honestly, having a family takes time. It, it, it sure does. Uh, I, I would have a lot more time for Jesus stuff, except for a wife and kids. But I would have myself there, too. And, and if myself is the problem, that needs checked. Right. Yeah, it's it's uh, 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 I would I would like to think as well um, that uh, if, you know, if I didn't have a wife and kids, I, I'd spend all of this time. Uh, 80, 100, 120 plus hours a week just devoted to uh, uh, to God and his word and the mission of the church. Uh, I know myself, uh, I, I would I would still be lazy. <laughs> I, would, I would not be like Paul or the other guys who could do this. But uh, to, again, back to this point, though, you had set up this this gift of uh, procreation, this gift of intimacy and sex that you talked about uh, within those confines of marriage. Um, that's the norm. Right. That and and norm, not by like uh, the majority of people do it. But no, God ordained that to be the norm. Right. right? Not just common, but the way it ought be. Correct. And there's going to be outliers, but we don't make uh, we don't make policy or we don't make uh, uh, um, uh, doctrine on outliers sort of things. So Paul also say out. We don't make doctrine. God makes doctrine. Right. Like, no. let, I mean, this is actually right. a, a kind of a big deal, right? I know it is. Absolutely. You, you got that right. Yeah. Um, Time in. Okay, good. Uh, so in regards to Paul, I referenced earlier, like he said, you know, I wish that everyone was like me uh, who is single, right? But this gift of singleness for him at that point in time, uh, was it, it exactly that? It was a gift of singleness uh, that was outside the norm. Which is why uh, he follows up very quickly saying, but I understand that 99.9% of you are actually going to have these sexual urges. And that's actually good. It's the way in, in which God has, has, has created you to be. So uh, if that's the case, uh, don't burn with lust inside yourself and then, and then actually uh, uh, sin because you can't keep those urges in check because you're a sinner. Uh, no. Do what you're supposed to do. Get married. That includes you, pastors. Do the same thing. And, and like we even sort of need to put an asterisk on that. There, there are some lusts that, that are of the fall. So marriage right. isn't given to curb lust until after the fall. Um, right. Before that, it's, it's, it's so to teach of Christ in the church and it, it's, it's for procreation. Um, and so even that, I would say, is, is sort of something you, you want to be careful with. The, the idea of, well, if it feels good, there's probably a good place for it isn't always true. Um, and in fact, there are some things that are meant to be warred against. But, but one of the ways that we, we war against sin is collectively in community. Um, so, so in other words, um, if, if you have sort of the desire to, uh, to steal things, because that's easier to talk about uh, without blushing in front of a bunch of clergy, um, then maybe the thing that you shouldn't do is sit in the store by yourself and look at the things you want to steal. Maybe you should actually be around people who are like-minded and can encourage you to a holier way of, of life. Um, whereas if, if, um, if you have urges that, that are not holy, sitting there by yourself, dwelling on them and wrestling with them apart from community is where the devil works and sin festers and sinners fall into awful, awful things. Right. It's not okay. No. No, absolutely. Yeah, and I know that you were kind of uh, being choosy with your words there. The, Pastor Goodman uh, is is in, inferring things that uh, we don't have the time to really dig into on, on this half an hour long podcast when we're trying to get through three articles. Uh, he has done a phenomenal job with, with other uh, people, uh, back to school stuff and, and, and some of those other things, uh, talking about these specific things. Um, so definitely look those up. Uh, drive because, to school podcast. Yeah, yeah. Oh, not back to school. Sorry. It's okay. I appreciate like the, the, the nod though. The, that was really kind of you. I know that the, the one guy's not going to look it up. Super professional. Right. No, I did my best. Right. Um, did what uh, did we say? Did, what else with this marriage of priest stuff? It, it's, it's dumb. Um, like <laughs> <laughs> that, or not it. married. To yeah. The, the idea that, that you would tell people who ought to be married, that they should not be married. That's, that's dumb. Um, Paul would, would actually classify dumb as the teaching of demons. So the teaching of demons, right? We're against can, that. Can I go? I don't yes, know. You can. Can I go one step further? What's the worst that could happen? 
Because <laughs> uh, I know there's, there's still some people. Uh, I think it's also uh, uh, kind of uh, goes down the same line of thinking, right? It, let's, let's, let's clarify this. Uh, our Lord has set up marriage uh, for good. That's the norm, right? And it is a picture of Christ and his bride. And all of that is good. And part of that is this sexual union between one man, one woman, until death parts him towards procreation um, and for one flesh, Right. Um, and that's how God created it in, in the, the garden. That's how he always speaks of it uh, ever after, right? Like when he's speaking of marriage, this is what marriage is. Um, and then we've got uh, within Rome, and I think uh, Luther kind of believed this too. And I think there were some people, uh, maybe even still within some Lutheran circles, who still hold to the perpetual virginity of Mary, which is oh, just Oh, you're just going to go poking at everything today. <laughs> well, I think I should. Uh <laughs> Uh, but that's a little silly too, it, it, for my opinion, right? Um, for the, it, it would have been right, one. Right. <laughs> um, it would have been one thing, and, and, and again, I, I, I guess I haven't worked through the theology of whether or not it would have been good if, if, uh, if Mary hadn't been betrothed, but was just a single lady. Um, but let's pretend that that uh, uh, Mary was just this completely single lady, not betrothed to, to Joseph, and the Holy Spirit descended upon her and, and, and conceived within her womb uh, uh, Christ our Lord. Um, and then after that, she never got married. I, I, I don't think I would have any problem, and maybe Pastor Goodman either wouldn't have any problem with saying the perpetual, which means the continual until she died, um, or assumed into heaven, but we don't believe that, <laughs> um, uh, until she died, uh, uh, staying a virgin. Um, the problem is, uh, she's betrothed and she gets married to Joseph. And I think for, for me, and correct me if I'm wrong, and if you want to add anything, please do. Um, Boy, it, do I. Say, say that she remained a virgin throughout her entire life and her entire marriage with Joseph uh, would be anathema to what marriage is. I, I completely agree with you. So one of the things we sort of have to point out is that, that Lutherans fight about this is because there is a line in the, the confessions, which we ascribe to, which we say is true, that talk about Mary as ever virgin. So the question is, is this a title or, or is this sort of an active? So like, in other words, um, if you if you were the president and you're not the president anymore, so if you're President Clinton or, or President Obama, what do they still call you? They still call you Mr. President. That, that's a title. That's an office that does not go away. Um, so whatever Mary was matters going forward. So she is and always will be the mother of God, the Theotokos, um, the, the Blessed Virgin. And so then when we, we sort of go forward with that, that's the part that matters. Um, and then when you start to talk about what marriage is, it gets easier to talk about the rest. Um, yeah, I, I actually do believe that it, part of marriage is, is intimacy and that that's a good and, and noble thing. Um, I, I don't like sort of trying to explain away that that married people would be in, intimate with each other. Not all of them can be for various reasons, but just sort of the assumption that it would not be, it, it, it goes against what marriage is. Right. goes against uh, what God has actually instituted, goes against the norm. And that's the whole argument uh, that the reformers are having in this, hey, uh, we let our, mar uh, our, our, priests get, uh, our pastors get married, um, and that's a good thing, uh, because this is the norm and this is what our Lord has actually instituted. Um, and, and so let's, let's stop trying to, let's, let's stop trying to bring false piety uh, to this. Um, and just let our, our, our Lord uh, give us his gifts, and we'll just stand in those gifts. Amen. So you want to knock the church out real quick? Right. right. That will be the last one for today, right? Are, right. We, are we getting up on, on close to 30 minutes? Yeah, we're, we're about there. So um, to, to do this then, real quick, uh, the Roman Catholic Church said that they are the only true church. And we said, no. -uh. Um, now, we can recognize that uh, this was Mother Church. This was the place where uh, the rock was founded. Uh, this this was the, where, where Christ spoke and said to the church, here, here is where you can expect to find the good gifts. But the church is marked not by sort of having a pope or, or a lineage, but by the proper teaching of the gospel and the law and by the administration of the sacraments. And so the, the church is, is then not simply those who wear the fanciest hats and sit in Rome, but rather uh, Luther has this, this great quote. He says, the church is something that any seven-year-old child would recognize, namely the holy believers, the lambs who hear the voice of their shepherd. 
in your church, you should hear Jesus. That's how you know it's the church. Right. Yeah. And we talk, uh, we talk about things like uh, church militant, church uh, triumphant, uh, that's, that is the church here on earth and the church in heaven uh, uh, waiting the second coming and all of that. And that's all fine. It's still just uh, uh, one. It is the church. But what is the church except the body of Christ? Um, and it's the body of Christ with Christ as the head, not the, not the vicar of Christ on earth, i.e. the Pope, uh, 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 the head. It is, it is Christ being the head, and then therefore we are the body. And if it's Christ as the head, then what we need to make sure is uh, uh, what builds that church then? It's, it's his word. It's the, procl- it's, it's the proclamation of the word and, and, and the sacraments. And so we even say this, like, how, how can you be sure and confident that, that you are in the church or, or, or where you're going on a Sunday, uh, uh, you can be confident that this is it, right? It's, it's where the word is correctly proclaimed and it, sacraments are correctly administered. Like, there, there's your comfort. It, which means it has nothing to do with me. It has nothing to do with uh, a, a lineage where I'm now under the umbrella of the Pope. Um, it has everything to do with, no, Christ has proclaimed uh, his word of salvation and forgiveness of sins to you through his death and resurrection on the cross. If you get to hear that and then you get to receive it in things like baptism and absolution and the Lord's Supper, um, then be absolutely confident that you are uh, within the church. And then that makes the connection back to what we were talking about in the call and ordination. This was the argument then that uh, that Luther and the reformers was having, saying, okay, if this is the church, if the church is, is where Christ is proclaimed um, and his sacraments are actually given out, um, then the church has that authority uh, to, to, to place men into the office to stand in the stead of Christ. Not this one guy wearing a fancy hat in Rome, but it's the church who gets to do it. Yep. Yeah. Yep, yep. So uh, we'll, 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 it? we'll call it there, yeah. You want to say anything huh? pithy before we, we, we sign off? No, I think I've gotten in trouble quite a bit, right, already. I don't know. I think... Uh, <laughs> I think I'm good. How about you? You got anything pithy to say? No, I mean, if, you, if you're beating a dead horse, you just want to make sure that it's not going to get back up after that. You're fine. So you uh, gotta make, gotta make sure that it's dead. Yeah. yeah. All good. right. We out.